104.5, the team you're home for New York sports and, of course, big board sports. 10 to noon every weekday. Our buddy Chris Honorado, part of that, and, of course, the Mighty One Three, and now Section Tuesday. Um, so we, we've got uh, we've got latest news out of our high school football teams. Yeah. Everybody's doing good? What are we doing? What are we doing? Oh, I thought so, you were giving me the news. No, you're the news guy. <laughs> oh, I got I barely, you. I barely know where I am, Chris. We, we've had meetings all morning. I know. Corpus is, I don't have a hat on. I don't even know where I am. <laughs> that is true, man. It's you weird, did right? spiff up a little bit for today. I just, I just, last time I saw some of these guys, yeah. I was the squeaky wheel, so I decided to let them know that you're cleaned Jeff up. Jeff Levac is on board. The, yeah, the uh, WD-40 spray worked. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's, you know, I'm here to go. I am proud to be a member of the team. I just sat there and laughed loudly at all the boss's jokes. <laughs> You're yeah. so funny, boss. I don't know your name. It's You're so funny, true. though. Right. If you look close enough, you can see the hand working like a puppet. <laughs> uh, so football. Yes. Yeah. I would um, love to talk about this. Right. Let's do that. So, yeah, you know, Burton Hills had a bye in Class A, so they were already through the state right. semifinal, which we knew going in. And I think we talked about it on the show last week, guys, that – we felt really good that even all the other four teams had legit shots to get to the state semifinals as well. If there was one team that there was, I don't want to say doubt, but the biggest the challenge. Toughest road. There you go. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, was going to be defending state champ Troy in the double A's against New Rochelle. Uh, they play a quote home game, if you will, at Columbia High School. I was there. It was freezing. Um <laughs> And they get a late field goal to beat New Rochelle, a That's team they awesome. beat by six last year. So they've had a couple of really close games against one another. And now it looks like the road has opened for Troy in the double A's to go repeat at the Carrier Dome. Um, you know, these teams are strong enough, guys, where I'll stand here again today and say, I will not be surprised on any level. In fact, in, in a way, you almost expect these five, all five of them from Section 2, to get to the state championship game in Syracuse. It's, uh, it, it has been that good of a year for Section 2 football in my mind. Five. Five. That's, Chris, that's I insane. remember we keep saying right. no Section 2 team has ever repeated as state champion since they went to this format in the early 90s. Um, and now you've got a chance for three of them to do it. Glens Falls, Cambridge, Troy. And again, with Glens Falls... Shouldn't one of them be preoccupied with something else at this moment? Yeah, well, I, I have no doubt that Joseph Gerard III is is occasionally picking up a basketball and, and getting ready for, for the season coming up here. Yeah, for sure, because that'll be a quick turnaround. I mean, let's say Glens Falls plays in the state championship game. It'll be over Thanksgiving weekend, and then Gerard jumps right into hoop season. I think Troy has to be a little cautious of their road to the state championship. They're going to likely, likely oh, no, here we go. play Cicero and North Syracuse, who never even won a sectional championship in their school's history, but they may play them in Syracuse for the state title game. Mm. So just be aware home of that. Game. Could be a home game, like absolutely. That. Burton Hills, though, that week off, is that going to help or hurt that team when other teams are getting those reps in the state championships? I, I don't see how it hurts, honestly. And and I know we, you know we do this a lot with the pros, right? Rest versus rust or college bowl season, whatever it may be, when you have a layoff. But I'll take the week off. I'll sit back and let everybody else get kind of beat up, and I'll come out with fresh legs, ready to go if I'm Burnt Hills. If I'm head coach Matt Shell, I'm happy to take the week off and, and prepare. This is, a, this is guys, this is a program uh, and a head coach who's been through this so many times that it isn't like they are now, you know, oh, we've never been here before, now we got to sit for a week and then try to get amped up. I mean, this is a program that's done it so many times in the state tournament that uh, I don't think – if they don't play well, if the Spartans don't play well, says I don't think it's because of the week off. We're definitely wishing all those schools best of luck and see how many will get an opportunity to play for a state championship. But locally, RPI goes off to the NCAA tournament. They take down Union in the shoes game. This RPI team's got a chance to continue to play throughout maybe a Final Four bid, who knows, from the Liberty League. Right. And, I mean, you know where my heart was on Saturday, uh, by the way. How about that Ithaca Bombers team? I'll get back <laughs> to your RPI in a it. second, but hang on. It. Hang on. Yep. <laughs> because I know there are Cortland people in the building. I want to see some of your faces this week. <laughs> Cody Marshall, Kyle Ellis, where are you guys? So all of I a can rub Wahid Nabi's six touchdown passes in your face, Shaker Grad. Uh, that yeah. was that was nice to get the jug game. The Ithaca had lost seven in a row. It was embarrassing. We had we had we had Nabi on, and I was like, for a year, I thought. 
Well, he Nobby was just a different way to say touchdown because I saw him play at Shaker so much. Right. Turns out it is. It's Ithaca for touchdown now. No, nobody, fr- freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, doesn't matter who you were, no one in Ithaca program history had thrown for six touchdowns before. And Wahid Nobby does it not only as a freshman, but in the, the biggest game he'll play until he plays the Jug game next year. Uh, and he's oh, a punter, too. Right. <laughs> Okay, back to RPI. All right, all right, back to RPI. <laughs> uh, RPI wins a huge rivalry game. That's five in a row now for the engineers over the Dutchman. Ralph Isernia, the head coach at RPI, has never lost this game. He's 5-0 and himself on the sidelines. Uh, and not only does it just you know keep the shoes in Troy, it, it sends RPI to the NCAA tournament, the playoffs, whatever you want to call it, for the first time in a decade. They haven't been there since 2007. Um, and you said it, guys. They've got a chance to make a run here. And they have a freshman quarterback, George Marinopoulos from Gilderland. So they are doing it with inexperience under center as well, which is just a, a testament to everything else around Marinopoulos, obviously. But, yeah, the coaching staff, too. Uh, they'll play at Wesley on Saturday. And, you know, look, when it gets to the D3 playoffs, anybody who tells you they know what's going to happen, they're out of their minds. Nobody's out scouting these other teams. Uh, so RPI will get the, a good look at Wesley this week, certainly. We'll visit them for News Channel 13, uh, RPI, that is. And, and yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll see. Chris Honorado with us right now as we do Section Tuesday. And then uh, college hoops have tipped off. I, I mean, you Albany looks phenomenal. Sienna looks like they're kind of still finding their way around the court. Is that a fair assessment on both? Yeah, I think I think U Albany U Albany has a lot back. They have the top five returning scores from last year, uh, so they're in a good place to begin the season. Uh, I own a good test out of the gate at BU last night, and they get a win. Uh, and then you know they'll play Friday night at home against Yale, a chance to go three and zero. And if they can get to three and zero, they'll be four and zero because then they play SUNY Oneonta on Monday night at SFQ. So just just make them four and zero if they somehow get by Yale. Siena side of things, listen. I don't know how uh, how tired Saints fans are, are are of being told to be patient. You get to the MAC championship game last year, right? right. I mean, you knock off Monmouth. You then lose to Iona. I mean, uh, in a game that was as high scoring and entertaining in overtime as could possibly be. But you lose four seniors, and they all scored more than a thousand points. This is a young team. There isn't a single senior on the roster. So. Patience has to be taken here with this Siena team, and I hope fans have enough of it left uh, in order to to do that. They're going to really, I mean, I said it last night on the news, like there was no opportunity for the Siena team to walk before it ran because of the schedule out of the gate. College of Charleston, pick preseason to win the CAA. Florida Gulf Coast, pick preseason to win the Atlantic Sun. Now they're going to hit the road for Bucknell and Lehigh, two teams who are picked towards the top of their league as well. So, they are young and inexperienced, and they're facing really good competition. It's a it's a bad recipe for what you get last night, a 33-point loss. And just to back to the Siena fans' point of it, and maybe it's just from not being in the area, but I see Siena go off and schedule these really good mid-major non-conference opponents, and I don't know what Siena fans would want. They want to play lesser opponents so they get the Ws. Correct. But we know in 2018. Right, but, That's what no, they no, want. no. But in 2018, <laughs> let's say Siena's a top team in the MAC. It looks like Monmouth two years ago. Where if you're beating Charleston, you're beating these Ivy League schools, you're being talked about for at least an at-large bid. It may not happen, but I would rather they see them go out and play tougher comps than you know the school for this, that, and the other thing that no one's heard of. And their records twenty and two and ten. Yeah, like Hobart. Fine. You know what? Hobart's probably right. They're G three <laughs> though. Like I don't get the frustration here with Siena fans that you want to just play bad teams that doesn't help your resume now no and and I think the philosophy behind scheduling and, and coach Pat's will tell you this philosophy behind scheduling these tough non-conference games is to you're gonna sell tickets right, right? right. you want to go see Dunk City hey right we, we got them in the home opener at the Times Union Center let's get 6,000 people or however many people you can get down there on a on a Monday night to go see Florida Gulf Coast so I get that but at some point, you've got to win games to breed a little bit of confidence, don't you? And so I think a non-conference schedule can be beneficial, like Gaz was saying, for the national resume. Fine. But what about the the confidence of that locker room? You need to build some wins along the way. And and if you look at this non-conference schedule of Siena's, there isn't a single one where you'd circle that and say, okay, well, they're going to win that one. It's just, right. It just isn't on that schedule. Yeah, but I, it's something weird about Patsos this year. And, and you know, it's the luxury of speaking to him for a couple of years now. He has this glimmer in his eye when he talks about this team, and it's not about today, tomorrow, or next week. Right. He knows that he's going to have these guys up and running at, at a really high pace by the tournament. So, like, they may they may be 
like a bottom seed in the tournament and still end up in the in the championship game. And you know, the, the non-conference doesn't play into what they do in the MAC anyway. So if, ask right. any college basketball coach of a mid-major program, uh, and they will tell you if we're playing well in January. That's really all that matters. Right. And really, if you're a mid-major and you're a one-bid league, the way the MAC and the American East are, as long as we're playing well in March, that's all that matters. Like you go win that tournament, it doesn't matter what you did in the regular season. Right. You go win that tournament, that's your automatic bid. It's the only bid that league is going to get. So all of this, like I said, is walk before you run kind of with Siena. And you hope at least by January you're seeing really positive signs that they can be competitive in a conference, which everybody keeps telling me is down this year. Right. Well, I we'll mean. We'll see. It's it's uh, it's been interesting. We and we also we talked to Ali Jacks yesterday too, who I just I mean she is probably the prettiest pit bull I've ever met in my life. Like she has got <laughs> a tenacity to her. Oh yeah, that uh, it's and I told her I was like I, I joke and I was like you intimidate me a little bit. She's like really? No, I'm like yes, maybe no. What's what's the right answer? Right. <laughs> Tall to begin with. Yep. Puts on the heels. Yes. And yeah, and and she gets after her players, no doubt. She she demands a, a really high quality plan, and 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 why not? What coach right. shouldn't? And they've got uh, Harvard coming up tomorrow, so we you know beat the nerds on basket right in the in hoops it, on the, the women's court, hoops, not yeah. in the classroom, right? That's no, good. yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, listen, I you know. I, I wouldn't. I'm not going against her on anything. I can just tell you that right now. <laughs> Chris Honorado, Section Tuesday, brother. We appreciate your time. Thank you, buddy.